Good morning, caregivers. It's Monday morning. It is June 17th, and it is 8.15, and it's time for you to get yourself going. Don't you wish you could sleep late? I, all last week, was totally looking forward to sleeping late on Friday, because, you know, I don't do my show on Friday. And then on Wednesday, it hit me that, as part of the Rock Hill Civitan Club, we put flags up and down the road here in town, and we had to do that at 7 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I did enjoy putting them out. But I really wanted to sleep. You know how that goes. I would like to thank our sponsors, Life in the Carolinas. You can find them at www.lifeinthecarolinas.com and on YouTube, the award-winning award -winning Emmy-nominated television show. Check out the episode called Remembering No More, which features my sweet mama. You, um, Life in the Carolinas, where it's never a bad day for a good story. And also HD Imports, the mechanics, the best in the world, right here in Rock Hill, South Carolina. You can find them on Flint Street Extension at 803-985-0985. They are there to repair your Honda, Kia, Acura, Toyota, and something else, Honda, Kia, Acura, Toyota, well, there's another one I forgot. Hyundai, that's it. <laughs> oh, my, I'm never going to get that right. But we do love the folks there. Tell them Carol sent you. What a wonderful time we had Saturday morning at Trinity United Methodist Church in Gastonia, North Carolina. They filled that room. That makes somebody like me very happy when a speaker looks out to a full crowd and a crowd that interacted and laughed when they were supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> you got to appreciate that. And then had lots of good questions, bought books afterwards. What a fabulous time. And we are just um, in hopes and prayer that something that was said that day will help them in their caregiving journey. Um, so thank you, Mark Hanna and all the wonderful folks at Trinity and on your team for making that happen. Um, let's see. I wanted to tell you my latest thoughts on grief. And what happened to me Friday night. I am learning that grief... Um, comes when you're not expecting it. Uh, it's just the weirdest thing, guys. I can think I'm doing okay, and then something will happen, and I'll feel extremely sad about my mama's passing. And um, and then I try to figure out what it was that brought that on, and it never makes good sense. I think I told you about the baby being baptized Sunday a week ago, and, and I'm not a baby person. As I tell people, I don't like children. <laughs> I like mine a whole lot, but I don't really like yours. I'm sorry. I just don't like other people's kids. It's just the way I am. My mama was that way. She didn't really care about kids so much. We both like old people, which is why I do what I do. But when I watched that baby being baptized, it just got, it got to me. And I just cried like a faucet. It just came out. I was like, oh, I hate crying in public. Um, but Friday night um, at 736 was the two-week anniversary of my mama um, entering heaven's portals. You know, she walked through those gates. And my that's when my heart died, and <laughs> that's when my life changed forever. I mean, really, at that minute. And at 7.34 on Friday night, I, my husband and I were watching an episode of NCIS. Um, we're way behind on that show. We started it some months ago, and we're working through it on Hulu. And, um, it was the episode where Warwick dies, and they had his funeral. And I sat and cried like a baby at Warwick's funeral. Warwick, a, a character, not even a real person, right? Made me so sad. And then I looked at my watch, and it was 7.34, knowing in two minutes would be the anniversary of my mama's death. So then I just cried some more. Ugh. I gotta not watch television, I guess. I don't know. Or just watch the cooking shows. But when I watch the cooking shows, it makes me hungry. What about you? So today I wanted to talk with you about um, new vaccines that are being worked on that are supposed to, or in, we're hoping they will stop the progression of dementia and stop what's going on in the brain with Alzheimer's that is thereby causing the symptom and the symptom being dementia. And remember dementia and Alzheimer's are not the same thing. Dementia is the symptom of Alzheimer's. It's, it's how it manifests in your body so that you know something's going on. Um, so the University of New Mexico has been working on a study that removes, or on a vaccine that removes tau from the brain. There are two properties that we know specifically with, with Alzheimer's type dementia that are in the brain. One is beta amyloid plaque and one is tau, T-A-U. 
And so the University of New Mexico was working on a vaccine that, um, well, it kept the formation of tau from happening. They were studying it in rats. Now, my joke is they told all these little rats a grocery list, and they saw how many of them could remember the grocery list four days later. <laughs> But uh, what they do is they see can they run a maze, as best I understand, and how long it takes them, how successful they are, how many turns they do wrong. And then after the vaccine, do they see an improvement? And they did. They saw improvement in rats. Well, that's excellent news. The bad news, we are not rats. And the other bad news is it's most likely a very long ways away from the human trial part. The University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center um, is conducting a study on uh, removing or stopping the formation of beta amyloid plaque in the brain. That's the other um, substance that we know is common in the brain of folks with Alzheimer's. Now, they studied on rats and they've taken it a step further. They have done studies on monkeys and rabbits. Well, now that starts making me feel a little bit better. I know a bunch of y'all that act like monkeys, so if it worked on them, it'd probably work on you. Most of them are in my family, but um, anyway, back to the point. <laughs> but what they found was that this vaccine actually cut the dementia in half. That's pretty cool. So the symptoms were half as noticeable, appeared half as often, half as severe. I'm not sure which of those, but they just say it cut dementia in half. Well, we'll take that, right? Um, then there was a st there is a study going on in Dublin, Ireland by the United Neurosciences. They studied 45 individuals with MCI. Now, MCI is an abbreviation for a condition called mild cognitive impairment. A lot of people call it the precursor to Alzheimer's. So statistically, people who are diagnosed with MCI do wind up later with a diagnosis of, as people call it, full-blown Alzheimer's. Well, it's Alzheimer's. Um, but there are folks who are diagnosed with MCI who never progress any further. They just have mild cognitive impairment. They have issues with thinking that never advance into Alzheimer's. But statistically, that's not the case. Most of them do wind up with Alzheimer's. So this study with United Neurosciences in Ireland, um, they divided the people into a group that got the placebo and a group that got the vaccine. Um, now, this, this vaccine was to uh, reduce the formation of beta amyloid plaque, just like the one in Texas. So, um, of those 42 people, now that's a really small study, even I admit that, but of those 42 people, part of them got the placebo, part of, part of them got the vaccine, and the vaccine was a uh, shot that was administered three times. I don't know how much time in between each um, injection, the article I read didn't say, and then three to six months later, they got a booster shot. 96% of those folks who got the vaccine showed an improvement in cognition. Now, I'm going to tell you, in my world, that's pretty good news. Um, I can tell you, for years and years, um, I prayed that the Lord would just stop my mama's dementia right where it was. You know, I'd say, Lord, I'm not asking for complete healing. Um, just stop it where it is. Let her be who she is right now until the day she dies. Um, that was not God's plan for her. You know, people say, oh, this person was totally cured of Alzheimer's and now they remember everything. And I know God can do that. He did raise a dead man called Lazarus. He, he raised a dead man called Jesus Christ. We know he can do that. But to say that there is a medicine that cured, 100% cured Alzheimer's in somebody and brought them back to who they'd always been. I don't think so, because what Alzheimer's does is it actually destroys parts of the brain. So when Alzheimer's takes a bite of the brain, that bite is gone. It is severely damaged, and, and the tissue that is gone is gone. How are you going to get it back? So that by the point of my mama's death, after she had been through all the stages of Alzheimer's type dementia, only one third of her brain remained inside her, in her head. So two thirds of her brain was gone. What kind of medication, what kind of uh, wonderful discoveries gonna put that brain back? You see, that's where when people say we've cured Alzheimer's and they're, they're back to who they were, I'm like, no, 
how'd you do that? It's like if I got my arm cut off and you figured out a way for to get my arm back and it happened six years ago. Really, that's pretty cool. But what we can see, and I'm hoping we do see, is the vaccines will more likely be for people who have mild cognitive impairment, that we can stop that very early on. While it's just a minute little problem in the brain, and before Alzheimer's does big damage, we can stop it. That makes sense to me. I understand that. Or maybe they'll come up with a vaccine that will stop it wherever it is in its tracks right then. So in other words, if, if Alzheimer's had to leave South Carolina and go to Florida, it, we're going to stop it somewhere around the Georgia line. And it's never going to go any further. Well, that would be good news because we don't want it to make it all the way to Florida, right? We want to stop it somewhere in its tracks. So that's, that's where the research is. Most of the research is on preventing it but such as the vaccines, rather than curing it. Does that make sense to y'all? Well, it made sense to me. I hope it makes sense to you. <laughs> oh, mercy. Okay, so today I'm going to try to get some work done here in my office. I guarantee nothing. But if you haven't checked us out on Spotify, I want you to go to Spotify and type in Let's Talk Dementia. And my podcast episodes are there. Podcast has listeners in 73 countries now, and I'm hoping Spotify will help move that number. And I'm not entirely sure that the tracking company keeps track of what happens on Spotify. I don't know. I understand all that. But anyway, I wanted to show you also <clears throat> again today um, our new book, Reminisce and Worship. It is a 30-day devotional written for that person with dementia so that they can have the opportunity to work through a devotional on their own. Here's a picture. See that? So it has wonderful pictures up top. And then, let's see what's on this page. What is that? Oh, praying hands. I couldn't see it. There we got a lamb. Nope, that's a horse. And so then there's a scripture, and then there are questions that the person with dementia can work through on their own, or you as the caregiver can sit down and work through them, the questions with them. Questions that will bring them back to a point in time in which they can remember and participate in life. It's very healing. Um, you can find it on our website, letstalkdementia.org, and you can order it, and we will send it to you and be so very happy to do so. Thank you to our sponsors, Life in the Carolinas, where it's never a bad day for a good story, lifeinthecarolinas.com, and HD Imports, 803-985-0985. Absolutely fabulous mechanics. Tell them Carol sent you. Thank you for joining me today. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Got no clue right now we're going to, what we're going to talk about, but I always figure it out. I'll see you then. Have a great caregiving day. Bye-bye.